I hear you, Susan. Great. I'm going to go ahead and start the recording. So again, welcome to Kahua Client Project Agreement Application Training. The very first thing I'm going to do is I want to show you guys how to log in to Kahua. But before I do that, I want to talk about how we can submit questions. And during the demonstration, if you'll add your questions via chat, and Valerie and Jessica are both on the phone with us today, they can go ahead and answer. And at the end of the demonstration, we'll open it up for discussion. If you're experiencing any problems getting into Kahua, I'm going to ask that you go ahead and create a support ticket and our support team will be glad to help you. And I put the link to the support portal in the chat box. So using my browser, I'm going to go and open HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash launch dot Kahua FN dot com. And I'll go ahead and put that link in the chat box as well. Now, there's typically a, a pop up that comes up and it says launch Kahua. And because I've checked the box so that way it will always launch automatically, it updates everything for me and I can go ahead and sign in to Kahua. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And because I'm not working on my GSA computer today, I'll have to go through the MFA login. If you're working off VPN, all you have to do is put your username in. In this case, I need to go ahead and get a code. And it'll take me just a second to get that. And Regina, yes, um, typically we go to the website to the launch kahuafn.com and we launch the desktop app from the website because what it does is it updates it from any changes that Kahoo has made over the weekend. Okay, so once I've entered my password, it's gonna open Kahoo and you've got your warning official notice. Once you read that, you'll go ahead and click okay. Now I'm gonna take you on a quick navigation and then we'll go ahead and get started. So when you log in, the first thing that you're going to see is you'll see the getting started page. Getting started is great, especially if you are working on projects. But any tasks that are assigned to you or recent messages that you've received within Kahua will be listed at the top. And then you have a couple of graphic charts that will show you any task by app that you have assigned to you as well. If you have any recent projects, they'll be listed here. And at the top, you'll see what we call the partitions where you're going to be working in. And we'll get into more of that in just a few minutes. On the left side is a left navigation. In the left navigation, you'll find Project Finder. Project Finder is how you're going to open the partition. Apps is an app launcher. And we'll talk about all these things in depth in just a second. Dashboards are where you can see dashboards that are created from widgets from the different applications in Kahua. There is a search feature that allows you to search globally across all of Kahua or within the current partition where you're working or across your messages or tasks. You can also search across your files in File Manager. The task will let you see any tasks that are assigned to you. If you've got the red indicator that lets you know how many tasks that you need to take care of. In the messages, if you have a red indicator, this lets you know all the messages that you have not read as of yet. To return to the getting started page, just click getting started. Now at the very top right, this is where we're going to take care of a couple of steps. So anybody that wants to follow along with me today, feel free to do so. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up our signature. And to do this, you'll click the profile icon. And yours may not have your name there just yet, but I'll show you how to set that up. 
and it's going to bring up my settings. So you want to go ahead and click my settings. And you've got several tabs and we're going to work with a couple of those today. So for general, one thing that you're going to want to check is you're going to want to slide the partition navigator to show your project number. So that's just a little slide bar. Just go ahead and slide it over and also show the advanced display, which is your account details. Now at the top, it lets you choose how you want to receive your summaries or your notifications. Do you want to get them immediately? Do you also want to receive a summary? Um, I get mine on Friday afternoon at four o'clock. I get a, a summary of the items, plus I have them send them to me immediately so I can you know, go ahead and address those. Your time zone will automatically set up according to your computer clock and then your default language. You can see how the regional format examples are below. Once you make changes to each tab, a save button will pop up. Make sure you click save. If not, you'll have a little orange flower letting you know that you still have items you need to save on that tab. The next item will be your profiles, and this is where you want to go in and add your phone number. This is really important, and on the right side, you'll see your prefix, your first name, last name, your title, the company you work for, the office. If the office isn't correct, you can go ahead and click the drop down and change that. You cannot change your email address. If you need your email address changed, maybe you've had a name change, reach out to support. Um, Kahua support at gsa.gov and they'll help you out with that. But make sure that you enter your phone number and enter it with dashes because you want it formatted so that way when you do what we call the portable view and print off the documents within the CPA agreement, you can go ahead and see how that phone number formats correctly. Once you make changes and you add your information, go ahead and click save. Now the next thing I want to show you is you won't need your password because everything is set up through GSA. And then go ahead and go to signature. Now you're definitely going to need to set up your signature um, because you'll need the signature on both two tabs within the application. So what I suggest everybody to do is go ahead and sign a piece of paper and take a picture with your phone. Um, that's the easiest way to do it. And then send that image to your GSA email and save that image somewhere on your computer. What you'll want to do is you'll click this add image and you'll scroll out. Let's say you want to go to, I save mine in my pictures. I'll select the file and I'll click open. It's going to take a second and I'll upload. If I want to put a comment there, I can, and I'll go ahead and click OK. The next step is to add a four digit pin and you'll want to add that twice. You want to put it in once and then confirm it the next time. And then once you're finished making those changes, go ahead. And remember, I told you that you've got a little orange flower there that lets me know that I've got items that I need to save on that tab. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And it lets me know the signature has been saved. And I'm going to go ahead and click the X to close out of my settings. Now, the, glo the client project agreement is a global app, which means you guys create that at what we call the GSA partition level. You're not doing this within the regional or project level. So to do that, you're going to go to Project Finder. And as you can see, I'm in the GSA domain. And then I have the GSA partition. If you set up your projects, if you set up your settings to show your project number, then your regional level is going to look like this, GSA-GSA. To select the GSA partition, you don't want to do it at the GSA domain. That's just like the higher umbrella where everything sits underneath it. You want to do it at the GSA level, the GSA partition. I select that and click select. I always check at the top to make sure I'm in the correct partition. So that way I'm putting all my information in the right area. Now we talked about the app launcher. 
to open the CPA, you're going to go ahead and click apps. And under project identification, initiation and planning, you'll find the client project agreement. Go ahead and click that app to open and it will open on, it'll be listed on the left navigation. Since you guys will use this application quite often, what I suggest as a time saver is to right click and click show on startup. So what happens is the next time you log in, this application will be on your left navigation. You won't have to go through the additional steps to find it. When you click the client project agreement application, the log will open. Right now, I've got my view set on Jessica's view. To change the view for my region, I'm going to click the drop down and I'll go ahead and select a region to show you. So as you can see, it's on region six now. So what you want to do is you want to select your region because what the system's going to do is it's going to remember the last view that you had open. So that's another time saver for you. So today, as I'm working through, I'm going to point you out to the to the record that I'm going to be recreating in my UAT environment. And that way you guys can follow along if you would like. So if you go ahead and click, it's CPA KS00074, you can follow along with me as I go through the creation of this document. Couple of things I want to show you before I do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the log view and how you can create a custom view for you. So if you want to create a custom view for yourself, you would click the drop down and go to manage views. Now you may want to have just a few columns or you may want to have quite a few more. It depends on how much information you want to see. So if I wanted to take out agency bureau and primary agency name, and I knew that these were assigned to myself, I could go ahead and remove this information. You can sort, you'll select the column that you want to sort by and then choose whether to sort by ascending or descending. The most important step here is the scope step because right now, whenever you create a view, everybody can see it. But as you can see, this is, it can get very unwieldy. If we all have views out there that we're sharing, it's going to become a very large library. So what we do suggest is go ahead and choose just me. Always choose just me. That way you're the only person that can see that view. And then go ahead and click Save As. Once you've entered your view name, go ahead and click Save. And your view will be at the very bottom of the list. Now there's a couple other things here. You've got indicators, filter, and grouping. We actually do a full training class on reports and views, and we'd love for you guys to attend those. We have a schedule that we'll be happy to share. Now there are several manager views up here at the top that they've used to share with you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and close here. To open a record within the view, I'm gonna go ahead and change back to Jessica's view. And again, if you guys want to follow along with me and you're in the system, go ahead and open Jessica's view today. Or if you have a CPA that you're working on and you want to follow along as I'm talking through these fields, you can. Now, we also have one other feature that I want to show you too, and this is what we call multi-edit. So let's say that I'm working in my view and I realized that I had not put my planning manager name in. I can click multi-edit and as you can see I can add the planning manager here and if I selected Jessica here at the top I could go ahead and copy to all and it would fill in all of the planning managers within that list. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I want to recreate this one so you guys can walk through it with me. And I'm going to do it in my training environment just because I don't want to mess up the information that your team has already put in the system. So I'm going to go ahead 
and I'm going to work in GSA UAT. Now you saw when I changed, when I selected that it changed up here at the top. Again, that's really important that you go ahead and make sure that you're in the right area. So I'm going to go ahead and open my app. I'll go to client project agreement. I'll right click because I want it to show up on startup. And to create a new CPA, I'm going to go ahead and click the new button. Occupancy agreements are required for a client project agreement, and the OAs are populated by an integration from the OA tool. OAs are brought into Kahoot and draft and final states, and the integration runs daily. If an OA is expiring in 42 months, the integration will automatically create a client project agreement and will populate the first tab titled OA details, which is this one here. And then it will save the record. The functionality is, this functionality is going to be released soon. At the beginning of the following one, month, once that functionality is released, a scheduled report will be sent to alert the regional POC for CPA 3PO RPAs that the client project agreements are ready in Kahua for review and to begin the process of planning for initial engagement with the customer. Now, if a planning manager wants to create a manual CPA before the 42 months, they can, and I'm gonna show you how to do this now. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna click, since I selected new and my agreement is open to the right, a couple of things I want to show you to make life much easier here. You can see that I've got just a little bit of screen space here, but if I click down here at the bottom, I've got three buttons. The very first button to the right will open the screen to full view. If I click the two bars, it returns me back to split screen. This shows me my log and shows me the document. If I click the three horizontal bars, it shows me the full register view. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the full screen. Another great feature is over to the right. You can see where it says one, two, and three. Those are the tabs. And underneath are all the different sections. I love this feature because I can quickly get back and forth to where I need to work. Especially when I save, I can jump back to the section where I need to add additional information. To add my OAs, I'm gonna go ahead and click that intake button. And I like using the search feature because the search feature lets me quickly find my records. So if I go ahead and click search, I have the ability to search by multiple fields. I'm gonna search by OA number. And I'm gonna start inputting. I don't have to put all of the OA number. It's going to filter down to what I need. So I want to find OA AKS01949. And then I want 1999 at the top. So I've selected those two. Now, I was lucky here because the prefix for both the OAs that I was selecting were right, were the same. So it was very easy for me to find them. But let's say the prefix is different and you need to find the other one. You will need to go in and search for those individually. So if I needed to find one, let's say that was an AWY, I'd have to come back in here, click the search, and go back in and search for the next one. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out here. Now, if you're using multiple OA agreements, you wanna make sure that you assign one as the primary. And I do have um, 1949 selected as the primary. If I needed to switch, I just check this box here and remove it from the one that was selected automatically. If you wanna add comments, if you have anything you need to put in here, you can add a comment. And what this does is when I save it, it time dates and stamps the comment with my name. We'll talk about references as we get later into your agreement. So what I'm gonna do is a couple of options you have here. You have save and close, save and new, <clears throat> excuse me, save and copy and save. 
a lot of options. Save and close will save the document and return it to read only view. It's still here. You just can't make any edits unless you click the edit button. Save and new will save it and open a brand new document, a brand new record for you to enter. Save and copy will save and copy the one you have. And save saves it, but it leaves it in edit mode. So that way you can continue your work. Now, as you can see, the comment that I added is right here. It also has my name and company and the date, the date and the time. So the next step will go to the part one initial engagement. The CPA number is a new auto-generated field. Your status is going to move and it's going to change as the document moves through its workflow. So you want to make sure that you leave it as, as is. The day prepared is the current date, but this date can be changed if you need to. You'll just click the icon and select your new date. The project name is automatically created based on the information from the OA details. It can be changed if necessary. And the project name uses the following information. CPA is the header, the region, the city, the state, and the expiration of the primary occupancy agreement. One of the first things that you'll need to do is enter the CPA project description. You'll also need to enter the agency POC name. Enter their email and enter their phone number. Make sure that you do format the phone number so that way it does print correctly. And I'll show you what the output looks like in just a few minutes. You'll want to se select the planning manager. So if you start typing the name of the planning manager, they'll populate underneath. You can add a nickname if you'd like. Now scrolling down under, you'll see where you've got all the information pulled in from the OA and you have the agency bureau information, Jessica's email, it has the primary agency name, the building, the current address, et cetera. If that information is not correct, you'll need to check the OA tool to make sure that is correct. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead in the space planning information and I'm gonna select GSA leased. I'll add the number of occupants and I'll add the square footage. I'll next add the proposed rentable square foot. And then proposed parking spaces. You can see the information it brought in originally. And if they're proposing a solution, you wanna enter Y in the field right below. Next, you'll want to update the 1B space recommendation strategy statement. And there are a few fields to update here. Update the known agency UR methodology. And the known unique space. And you can copy and paste. And make sure to update the known unique operational considerations. Now, in the boxes for Part 1C, Supplemental Information and Documents, if you click either of these boxes, you have to attach the document before saving. And I'll show you in a second where you're going to make those attachments. So I'm going to select one. Remember where we just created our signature. You want to make sure to go ahead and add your signature here. And to do that, you'll click Add Signature. 
and you'll enter the pin you used when you created your signature earlier. As you can see, my signature is here now. It also says on the bottom that was signed by me on 216 at 125. Now, because I selected Part 1C Cost Options Analysis Report, I need to go ahead and upload load the supporting documentation. So I'm going to click Upload here, and I'm going to open my folder, and I'm going to select all my docu documents and click Open. They'll check off as they're going through. Once they check, I know that they've been uploaded. And once the OK button becomes visible, then I can go ahead and click OK and they'll be there. As you can see the documents are listed below. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save here. I like to save and save often. You are working in an internet-based tool. Internet goes down, you don't wanna lose your information. So at this point, we're going to click part one completed and you can print the portable view in PDF format and email part one to the client or use the send feature and I'll show you how to do this. So I'm going to click part one completed. You can see I've got two new buttons on the bottom. One's new version and the other's received agreements and we'll get to those in just a few minutes. To go ahead and click part to print part one, I'm going to click the view and select initial engagement. And this is a portable view that was created. In just a moment, it will populate. You can scroll down and see everything that you want to see in the document. Make sure everything is correct. Your signature is there along with the date and time. Now, if you would like to download this to email it, you can go ahead and click this PDF button right here. And what it's going to do is it's going to open another tab. You can click the drop down and you can download it to your desktop or to another folder, and then you can email it using Gmail or your, your email account. So to go ahead and close this, you're going to click the X to return. Now, we also have another option. If you want to send it from Kahua, you can click send and it's gonna open a send window. You can go ahead and select the name of the person or type their email. If you want to CC someone, you can select their name from the list. If you want this copy to your communications app, so it keeps a log of everything you've sent, you can do that. You'll put a subject in, put you know any instructions that you have, and if you need to delete something, let's say that you don't want to send the strategic requirements because it's not ready, you can go ahead and select this item and click delete. And it will remove, you just do that with each one of the records that you don't want to send, just delete those items and then click send. Now you can send this to people externally, you just enter their email in the two box. Okay. Now, anytime, and I want to go ahead and close this because I want to show you, anytime that you come back in and you want to go ahead and update part two, log back into Kahua, open the client project agreement application, locate your record, and go ahead and click to open. It's going to open in split screen. Just click the button on the bottom and it'll open in full screen. Now, because I opened it, it's read only. And I wanted to show you that for a reason. In order to edit it, you need to go to the top and click the edit button. That's gonna open it so you can add additional information. As you can see, quite a bit of information has populated. Everything that we entered, you know, as far as the agency POC and Jessica's name, everything came over. I need to add some additional information on the part two strategic requirements tab. One will be the building name. The next will be the street address. Then I need to enter the city and the state and the project number.
In the next section, I need to enter the estimated term in months. And this is a key field because it's gonna drive the expiration date. Couple of things to know here. As you can see, the expiration date right here shows 2-15-22. That's gonna change once I enter the estimated term in months and the number of months firm. When I save, this information will update. Now, if I scroll down just a bit, you can see where it's now 7-15-2035. In initial housing solution, I need to go ahead and choose my housing solution. And if the option selected is GSA leased, an additional question is going to appear, as you can see below here. You want to make sure to enter the applicable answer. So I'm going to select succeeding. And I'm going to scroll down to the agreed upon strategy. And that's where you're going to enter the agreed upon strategy for the project and the vacant federal space check. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my proposed strategy on the very top box. And I'm going to go ahead and choose no here. But if you do choose yes, you're going to need to put an explanation underneath. In the space type information section, you'll see where the anticipated RU factor is automatically defaulted to 1.15. Now this RU factor can go up to nine digits and it can be changed if you need it to be. I'll add the number of occupants and I'm gonna scroll down and enter my office space information and office support space. I don't have anything for warehouse, and you can see that these are calculating as I'm going along. Now I want to break this down even further. I'm going to add four lines right here in the detailed view. Typically, typically if I want to add a line, I'll click insert, but I want to add four. So I'm going to change this number to four and click insert, and it gives me four lines. I'll type the space name. And then I'm going to go to the space type and I'll select the space type and then enter the USF. The RSF will automatically calculate for me. Just have a couple more to add. And if I start typing, it filters the list to make it much easier to find everything. Now, as you can see, as I was adding information here, the information above was recalculating. Okay, and under should the occupancy agreement be non cancelable I'm going to go ahead and select yes, and I need to go ahead and add a justification. Then under unique requirements and operational needs, you're just going to choose yes, no, yes or no, as you go along, and if you put yes, you definitely want to try and put a description of the requirement or the operational need. And it'll take me just a second to finish these up. And 
even if you don't have all of the information, you can come back, add the additional information, and then go ahead and update it before you send it out. Okay, the standard operation is here five days a week, 10 hours a day or 50 hours. In this case, the start time automatically defaults to 7 a.m. To change that time, all you need to do is click the drop down, and I go ahead and just start by putting the hour in. And then I can select between a.m. and p.m. and you just select the time. Same as for the end time. You want to put in your days a week and you want to put in the number of days per week and you want to put in the total hours per week. In the next section, I'll enter the parking information. So under structured parking, I'm going to enter 12. And then I'm going to choose secured and reserved. I need to select whether there's a requirement for EV charging, so I'll do yes, and I'll put in the number of charging stations that are needed. Scrolling down to utilization rate and or space reduction, I'm going to go ahead and enter information in the very top line to describe the approach. Then I'm going to click the drop downs to select the applicable answer to the questions. Under part two, location and delineated area confirmation, I need to go ahead and add my applicable information. So I'm going to go ahead and place this information here. And if either one of these options apply, just check the box. For additional initial schedule parameters and risk, I can go ahead and add multiple lines. And if there are any high level opportunities, I need to add this information as well. Now under part G, 2G other considerations, check the box for any that do apply. So I only have one item that applies here. And now we'll enter the preliminary budget information. So the numbers entered in the left column will calculate the items on the right field. So I'll enter $25 for the shell rate, $6 for the operating rate. I'm not going to enter anything for my real estate. You'll notice that the base TI is here. This auto populates as we go along. The LCI is pulled from the local construction index app, and that's updated by another team, and that'll be updated yearly. Once I select the state and the city, this, the LCI will show. I need to also enter the amortization term and rate. So I'm going to put in 60 and put in 6%. Now I have additional information for underfunding type. So for the TI general, I need to select the funding type. So I'm going to choose BA53. For TI custom, I'll select BA80. For above allowance, I'm going to go ahead and put in 50,000. And I'll choose BA80. Then I need to go ahead and enter my funding sources. So funding one, I'll put in $50,000 and I'll select the funding type. I also need to go ahead and put in a purpose for the funding. I'll do the same thing with funding source number two. And you'll notice that this changes as I'm adding additional information. Now you have the CPA checklist. 
And you want to go through each one of these questions and make a determination. Just click the drop down and make a selection. Now you need to add your signature again because you want to make sure that you agree to everything that you put in. So you want to click add signature, enter the pin and click OK. And click save. And it's going to take you back to the top. And again, you can use the section navigator over here to move to different areas. If I wanted to go back to the preliminary budget, I go ahead and select that and it brings me right down to the location where I need to be. So now you can go ahead and print the document via PDF. I'm gonna go ahead and close that view. Say you're ready to send it to the customer. You can go ahead and click send the way I did earlier. You'll put in the customer's email or if they're in the system, their name and pull them up. Add a CC or BCC, click copy to communications if you want to add it to the communications app. What that does is it logs all the communications that you send. Put a subject, enter a message. And if you want to send all the documents, you can. If you want to remove some, remember you can go ahead and select it and then click delete and it'll remove any of the items you select and click send. If you want, you can go ahead, click view, select strategic requirements, click the PDF button over to the right, and then you can go ahead and click download. And then you can email from your Gmail if you would like to. Now, there's a couple other things I want to show you guys today. Um, to review the document history, click History. And you can view Complete History. And what this shows you is you can click View Edit. And this tells me that I created it. It's If I want to click on View Edit, it shows me anything that I've changed in the document. So if you guys are working as a team and you want to see what someone else has changed, that's a great way to do it. Now, let's say that you've already, and once you do receive the agreement back from the customer, let's say they've signed it, you're ready to go. In the future, you guys are going to be using a DocuSign feature. So when the agreement is received from the client, Kahoo is automatically going to mark the agreement as received. But if they send it back to you via email, you're going to want to come in here, click edit, and upload the document under references. So you'll click Upload, go ahead and select your document, click Open. Maybe put a comment there and click OK. It puts everything right here, and then you can go ahead and click Receive uh, Received Agreement. So when I do Received Agreement, it locks the document down. So I can't make any changes because I'm an admin, I do have those rights, but for you guys, it's going to lock it down and you won't have these buttons up here at the top. So what you'll want to do is create a new version. To do that, you've got the button at the bottom that does new version. And what it does is it brings over everything from the original version. So you're not retyping everything, you've got everything there. And then you can go in, make your changes, and then you walk back through the process exactly what I just showed you. Another thing you can do is let's say that you needed to create a CPA without an OA. What you're going to do is you're going to click new and you'll start with the part two strategic requirements and enter all the information here. You'll save it and then walk through the process of sending it to the customer. Okay, does anybody have any questions?
you guys can unmute yourself if you'd like. Hey, Susan, this is James in Region 6. Hi, James. Hey, I just had a question. Is there a, a way, maybe I missed this, is there a way to, like, say, say I just have, like, a group of customers that I work with all the time. Say I work with DEA, DOT, and uh, DOL. Is there a way to add those AB codes like to my profile or, or if I wanted to generate like a, like a list of like all the uh, expiring uh, leases that are coming up so I can kind of keep track of them that way? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So you might want to create a register view, a log <clears throat> to go ahead. And what you could do there is pick the columns that you wanted to have. So you wanted to do it, you might want to do it by agency, right? Yeah, if I just want, if I knew the, the codes that I was going to, and what would be nice, like DOL has multiple codes and DOT has multiple codes. If it was, um, if I knew I was going to work with all the DOT and it's, I can't even think of the AB code off the top of my head, but say it was 1800, it would just list all those AB codes under 1800. That's always been a sticking point because you've got the main 1800 code and then you have like the sub agency codes under that. And we've had other systems where it seems like it kind of breaks those up. I don't know which this one does. Um, I'd like to take a look at that with you. I think what we can possibly do is create a log view for you. And what you could do is filter based on those codes Yeah. and add those filters to the list. And then we can have indicators that show when they're going to be overdue. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Reach out to me and we can set up a session to do that. I'm sure my group would, I'm kind of speaking for my group because that's kind of how we work. We have, we have a list of all the expirations uh, for each playing manager. And so each playing manager can see their own book where it shows um, AB codes and then expirations. And that's kind of how we've been, we've been working it in our region. Regina, I see she's had some questions during this, so she's on, but that, that's how we've been kind of operating for a while. So I wouldn't be the only one asking this. <laughs> okay. Well, what I can do is set up a session with your team just to show you yeah. how to create more in-depth views. Okay. Let, let me know when that works for you guys and I'll schedule something. And James, when you set up that, that individual view, they call them log views, they're individual views. Um, there is absolutely an option to put in that, that agency bureau code filter and we're filtering off of, or we're using the full eight, four digit AB code. So you would want to put in, you know, if you're doing DOD 97, you'd put in all the 97s or I think there may be a wild card. I'm not hundred percent certain. But it is something definitely we can we can look at, and, and Susan will help you set those up. Yeah, because I, I wouldn't know necessarily every single DOT off the top of my head. Yeah. So there is an agency bureau contains. So yeah, you could do. I think I think we can get you there. Okay. Thanks. Excellent. Does anybody Thanks. else have any other questions? Hey, Susan, I was just going to ask, can you um, go back and show everybody where you did the uh, partition, show the partition number back in your settings? You mean back in the GSA domain? No, in your settings. In okay. Your little, okay. Yeah. All right. So if you go to my settings and general, um, go ahead and do the slide bar. Now, it may require that you log out and log back in. Um, just to be able to see your changes. But just go ahead and do the slide bar here and do the advanced display as well. And make sure that you save at the bottom. And then one more thing, Susan, can you go back to show, I think most people are gonna come in at the GSA domain. Can you show how to get back to GSA, GSA? Absolutely. So I'm gonna open Project Finder. And when you first open up, it's gonna be at GSA domain you'll see where we have the GSA partition underneath. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and, so I like clicking this little arrow because it changes it very quickly for me. I'll know I'm at GSA, GSA by looking at the top. So if you are, let's say you're at GSA domain, you can see where I'm at GSA domain now. 
I don't want to add my CPAs here. I want to go to Project Finder. And I want to go ahead and go to the GSA partition, which is right here. Thank you. You're welcome. And Val, you wanted to talk about Google Drive today and how people could pull from Google Drive. Uh, that's something I'm testing for, uh, for next month. Okay, great. All right, did anybody have any other questions today? All right, Jessica, did you have anything you wanted to share before we close out? Nope, just wanted to thank everybody for their time today. Well, thank y'all so much. We appreciate you coming and we'll, if you need anything, feel free to send a, you know, email and we'll be glad to jump on and help you guys out. Thank you. Thank you.